Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. If you're a drone pilot in Canada, either listening to aviation radio or preparing to initiate a radio call, this video is for you. This is the third in my three-part series on aviation radio for drone pilots in Canada. And I'll be explaining the etiquette surrounding aviation radio calls, terminology used, and key phrases to be aware of. Let's get into it. As I mentioned in my previous videos, use of the aviation radio band in Canada is strictly regulated. This is not the place for idle chit chat or casual conversation. Every time you push the talk button, your communication is expected to be clear and concise, either providing information, requesting permission for an action, or acknowledging instructions. You're expected to plan your message before saying it. And I'll say it again, for most drone operations, just use your phone to coordinate your mission with an airport. Only use radio as a last resort, or if specifically approved by air traffic control or an airport operator. There is very specific jargon and phraseology used in aviation radio. And one of the first things you should know is the phonetic alphabet. Most commonly, this method is used in communications with private aircraft, where their call sign is their registration letters. Very simply, you spell out each letter using a standard set of words, such as Foxtrot, Alpha, Romeo, Tango. Even if you aren't using a radio every day, knowing the phonetic alphabet is handy when reading off, I don't know, appliance model numbers or tracking numbers on the phone. And there's often a question on pilot exams expecting you to know the phonetic alphabet. So watch out for your Sierras versus Siennas and similar tricks. Pronouncing numbers is usually done one digit at a time for precision. And the word decimal is used for decimal points. As it happens in the States, they use the word point instead of decimal. Some numbers are pronounced a little strangely to make them more distinct tree rather than three, fower rather than four, and niner rather than simply nine. Zero is always zero, not O. When a number or acronym is commonly understood or is not crucial, such as the aircraft model number, flight number, or wind speed perhaps, the numbers can be spoken like in normal language. For example, a 10 knot wind from the west would be expressed as wind 270 at 10. An AGL, the abbreviation for above ground level, would be better understood as AGL rather than Alpha Golf Lima. Time is always in 24 hour format, each digit spoken separately, and is normally in universal coordinated time, not your local time. This is emphasized by ending a time reference with the word Zulu. That said, if you needed to rapidly communicate something about a drone flyaway, using the local time would be more pragmatic than doing mental time zone math, and it would be okay. Before initiating any radio call, etiquette requires you to listen on the selected frequency for other communications already in progress. Do not interrupt someone. Unless your call is for distress or urgency, allow any other communication to finish first before jumping in. When you do have a chance to speak, your communication must have four parts, so plan it out beforehand. Their call sign, your call sign, the message, and the closing. The first part you should say is who you are addressing the call to. If you're calling a specific ground station or aircraft, state their call sign first. If you're making a call to anyone within range, use the expression all stations. The second part of your communications are the words this is followed by your call sign. If you're a drone pilot with your Rock A using a handheld radio transceiver and you don't have a pre-assigned call sign, one idea is to identify yourself as Certified Drone Pilot Papa Charlie 1234, using Papa Charlie as short for pilot certificate and the last four digits of your certificate number. 
part three of your communication is your message, concisely stated, such as requ requesting clearance to land if you happen to be a manned aircraft. You usually include your current location, such as the cardinal direction from the airport, and your distance and altitude. For manned aircraft, distance is always in nautical miles, and altitude is always altitude above sea level, not above ground level. If you're communicating about a drone operation, however, again, it would be pragmatic and well understood to use feet above ground level instead of trying to remember your ground level elevation and adding the altitude from your controller and getting all mixed up. Any aircraft in the area would easily be able to interpret your drone's trajectory in AGL terms as long as you included AGL as a suffix to the number. When you are simply initiating communications, there is no message. You just say the call sign for the station you're calling, followed by this is, and your call sign. Then wait for a response. And like I said earlier, including the phrase certified drone pilot with your call sign would help set the context. The fourth part of the message is the closing, which is either over, handing the call over to the other party, or out, indicating you are done communicating. A conversation on the radio is usually a series of these fairly terse messages, starting with an initiation, an, an acknowledgement, a request, such as requesting clearance to land, followed by a clearance, then a confirmation. Instructions and clearance permissions from air traffic control must always be repeated back by an aircraft as a form of confirmation of hearing those instructions. There are many standard phrases used in radio communications, so I'll touch on a few that are pertinent to drone pilots, either when initiating calls or simply listening to other communications. I'll start with Mayday. This is to be used only in a distress situation, which is the worst. It is used when the aircraft is threatened by serious and or imminent danger and requires immediate assistance. It is usually repeated three times to ensure it is heard and understood. If you hear Mayday on the frequency you are using, immediately cease whatever else you were talking about on that frequency. Pan Pan. This is to be used only in what is called an urgency situation, the next priority down from distress. You use it when there is a concern for the safety of an aircraft, vehicle, or person on board, but does not require immediate assistance. If your drone is flying directly towards an airport in a flyaway situation, it is likely at this pan-pan level, not mayday. The next phrase is disregard. This is used to indicate that the previous communication can be ignored. Say again. Use this when you don't understand the other party and would like them to repeat it. Stand by. This is typically used by air traffic control to tell you to wait for further instructions. Go ahead. This means to proceed with your communications. Go ahead does not mean you have clearance for whatever you requested. Hold short. This is an instruction to an aircraft on the ground wanting to take off. It means to wait for the runway to clear of other operations. So it's a clue that there is another aircraft already either taking off or landing, both of which will mean there will be low-flying aircraft in the area, so watch out. Cleared for takeoff or cleared to land? Well, these are pretty much self-explanatory, but again, these are indications that there will be low-flying aircraft in the area. Those are a few key phrases that you should be aware of as a drone pilot, either listening to or using an aviation radio. A great way to become familiar with these terms is to listen to air traffic control on a website like liveatc.net. Listening to the Chicago Tower with the airport code KORD is enough to scare you off casual radio communications, but it is good practice for your listening skills. Canada 165, when we've heard 24 right Delta. Canada 165, tower, line up wait, runway 248, delay for each of those. Line up wait, runway 24 right there, Canada 165. 
One other thing that can come up, and for some reason it frequently appears on pilot exams, is the radio check. This is a simple check on an otherwise unused frequency that should not last more than 10 seconds. If you are station A, wanting to check your signal quality by asking station B, you would say, Bravo, the station you're asking, this is Alpha. Radio check one, how do you read? The response would be something like, Alpha, this is Bravo, read you three with background static. The answer is always on a scale of one, being bad or unreadable, to five, excellent or perfectly readable. Here's the full range in this table. Another strange thing you're expected to know on your exam. It's in the knowledge requirements so for drone pilots, so don't shoot the messenger. I'm not making this stuff up. The actions to be taken in the event of a two-way radio communication failure while flying in class C or D, or, or D airspace. This scenario is discussed in the AIM document in the VFR section for manned aircraft, but most of it doesn't apply to drone operations. So the sensible steps are to land your drone as soon as possible while staying within the boundaries of your stated mission and attempt to resume contact with air traffic control by means of a cell phone. It's a very strange knowledge requirement, but there you go. Okay, let's wrap this up with a sample of two critical communications you may need to make one day. And again, the recommendation I hear always is to place a phone call to either the airport operator or the tower if, it, if it's urgent, not to go on the radio except as a last resort. Let's suppose you're flying near Calgary's main airport for some reason, and your drone, of course, goes crazy and heads straight for the runway, out of control at 300 feet AGL. Calgary Tower, this is certified drone pilot Papa Charlie 1234, Pan Pan, Mavic 2 Pro drone, out of control at altitude 300 AGL, distance 0.5 miles north of airport, heading 180, Calgary Tower, over. And yes, I do recommend using AGL, as long as you clearly state that after the number of feet. You have it right in front of you on your controller, maybe in meters, but it's easy to convert. So there is less chance of an error trying to figure out your altitude above sea level, and it will be easily understood by all concerned. Again, I would always try to place a phone call first, and the emergency numbers for this kind of event are in the Drone Pilot Canada app. And they automatically appear by pressing the emergency button during a flight. But if you choose to use radio contact, that's exactly the kind of thing to say. The second kind of communications Transport Canada expects you to make on the radio is in the event that you're flying close to a certified airport, not in controlled airspace, and you have been unable to contact the airport by phone to coordinate the flight. In that weird corner case situation, you are required to make what is called a blind call before your flight. Using the Calgary example again, you could say, all stations, this is certified drone pilot, Papa Charlie 1234. Drone operation commencing at 0600 Zulu, north of Calgary International, 0.5 miles, at a maximum altitude 300 AGL. Drone operation will cease by 0700 Zulu. All stations. Over. Repeat this communications every 15 minutes or so if your operation is still in progress. Well, there we have it. The final episode in this three video series covering radio knowledge for drone pilots in Canada. In this video, we covered the basic protocols for radio communications, etiquette, key phrases, and terminology to be aware of, and two critical communications I hope you will never need to use. I hope you have found this series useful, and if so, drop me a thumbs up below the video, and I'd love to hear your comments as well, if you would like to take the time to share them. If you don't already subscribe to my channel, please do so and ring that bell 
for notification of all my future videos. Thanks for watching.